when a trash can gets full and there's a government shutdown, people don't stop throwing stuff on top of it. But I did manage to pick up a couple of truckloads of trash before I was told, don't do it anymore. People were not even able to volunteer during the government shutdown. The U.S. is the only country in the world where the government can actually shut down. And the threat looms nearly every year. Seven days till shutdown? Four days. t is six days. Five days. Government shutdown at midnight tonight. I just feel that gut like in my chest, like, ugh, like not again. So why does the U.S. even shut down? And what happens when it does? You travel three and a half thousand miles to America and find the place shut down. Every government in the world has to do the same thing, decide how to spend the country's money. In the U.S., they do that by passing spending bills called appropriations bills that give these federal agencies their budgets. It happens every year or every fiscal year. Japan is April 1st. In Kenya, it's July 1st. In the U.S., it's October 1st. And if the government misses that deadline... The budget wasn't passed. We have no money. And then, oh, you have to come to work anyway, just not getting paid. We did get back pay. Still, you have to wait for that. The saddest thing I ever seen was all these hardworking people in a line for the food bank. It's the conversation at the dinner table every single night. Well, Dad, do you know when you're going to get paid again? No, I don't. It's the way the U.S. government was set up, kind of. The answer to why we have government shutdowns actually starts in the Constitution. No money shall be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law. And so what that really means is that before any federal money can be spent, there has to be an actual appropriations law allowing it. But that can be interpreted in different ways, and it has changed over time. Back in the 1800s, there were no shutdowns, but there were other problems agencies would routinely blow through their budgets, then keep spending, and would come back to Congress and ask for more. So Congress passed the Anti-Deficiency Act, which tells federal officials that they really, really can't spend money without an appropriation. But that didn't stop the government from missing their deadline and creating long gaps in funding. As recently as the 1970s, there were plenty of these funding gaps. And yet... The agencies sort of pretty much just kept going. It couldn't possibly be that Congress wanted them to shut down if there was no budget bill passed on time, right? But what happened was, in the early 1980s, the Attorney General issued two opinions that tightened up this interpretation. The opinions basically said, no, seriously, unless Congress has passed an appropriations bill, agencies can't spend any money, including to employ the services of their employees. Even though there technically is money, we have no access to it. And since then, the U.S. has shut down, shut down many times. 1996 was the first big one for three weeks, and 2019 was the longest in history so far. I actually got to work, and they was like, we're on Frello, they shut the door down. I was like, oh, the, the door, they're not opening right now? But they were like, no, we, it's shut down completely. I was like, what is a Frello? What's going on? I couldn't work. I couldn't go in. We weren't even allowed to check email. <laughs> I ended up, you know, picking up side jobs, right, trying to make ends meet. These are all the agencies of the federal government. Here are the ones that actually shut down in 1996 and in 2019. Shutdowns don't have to be of the whole government. So it might just be that one set of agencies didn't get funded, Congress couldn't reach agreement with each other and with the president on whether that set of agencies would get funded, but the rest of the government was funded perfectly well. In 2019, around 800,000 federal employees didn't get a paycheck for 35 days, but more than half of them still had to go into work because there are some jobs that the attorney general said are exempt from stopping completely, what we call essential employees. So while the Department of Transportation was shut down, air traffic controllers still had to work. I don't show up with a headset and just do that job by myself. All the other aviation safety professionals that assist us and help us on a daily basis are now taken away. Homeland Security shut down, but TSA workers still had to show up without pay. We're one of the lowest paid agencies. Not receiving a check every two weeks was hard. People were on the floor with smiling, greeting everyone. Behind closed doors in the break room, you had people breaking down. 
national parks lost millions in entry fees. Wildfire mitigation projects were delayed. Immigration court hearings backlogged. And there were thousands of contractors that worked with all of these agencies who were also affected. If you were just working on a contract with a company, you did not get back pay at all. My son had chronic asthma, couldn't afford his medicine. I felt like I was, I was disappointing them and it wasn't even my fault. And a shutdown isn't just centralized in Washington, D.C. Only 15% of all federal employees live in that area, which means the economic impact is countrywide. Shutting down not only affects the, the federal workers, you know, if people aren't getting paid, they're not going out to eat. There is a severe economic impact of something like that, especially in a town like Huntsville. Overall, the U.S. economy lost $11 billion during the 2019 shutdown. Some of that was regained when employees received their back pay, but the damage was done. And the thing is, this doesn't have to happen. The legal framework explains why we end up having to have shutdowns as a matter of law, but why we have shutdowns truly is a matter of politics, which is that the more polarized the parties are and the more divided our government is, the harder a time Congress and the president have working out a budget agreement. And having divisive politics isn't uniquely American. In Belgium, there have been times where the politics were so bad, they just didn't have a government. We didn't really notice any difference. Our daily lives, it didn't really change much. I don't think the government could really like Stop. <laughs> Most countries couldn't. In nearly every other country, if the government were to fail to pass a budget by the deadline, agencies would just continue working with last year's budget. There's a push to do that in the U.S. too, just have an automatic temporary appropriations bill pass when the deadline is missed. The opposing argument to that is, whoa, 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 this is the one time we have every year to reset and to kind of work things out. And so where would the incentive go? Congress has passed fewer and fewer laws each year. Passing these appropriation bills has become the one time they're kind of forced to agree on something. And as the political ideology of Congress grows further apart each year, the likelihood of them agreeing on time kind of goes down. So every fall. Washington's version of Groundhog Day, another government shutdown looms. We are caught as pawns. Pawns in an ultimate game as a federal employee in a conversation that has nothing to do with this. We're not like going to work, like increasing the profit of a CEO. Like we're doing public services and now I'm not getting a paycheck. It's crazy. 